go. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our July Users Webinar dedicated to student manager function keys. Chuck calls these fabulous five function keys a bag full of goodies. So today is like Christmas in July, and we're glad you're celebrating with us. As I turn things over to the man himself, the master of all function keys, I will remind you to please that there's a, there's a handout that you can download and share with your colleagues. And that as Chuck, as Chuck is presenting, you can always drop your comments and uh, questions into the chat bar, and then I can get those to Chuck or answer them as needed. And I'll remind you that when the webinar is over today, please take just a few uh, moments of your time to respond to the survey we have. We're starting to plan our fall webinar series, and we want to make sure you have some input on that. So that's my housekeeping notes, Chuck. I'm turning things over to you. Very good. Thank you, Sharon. And again, welcome, folks. Uh, thank you for uh, taking time out of the summer uh, craziness and the heat and the sweat and the storms to learn about function keys or hopefully more about function keys. I want to ask right off the bat, how many of you have, just as a hand raising question, raise your hand if you have used a function key in the last month. And I'll count to three. One, two, and, you know, I know we've got a couple more. Ooh, boy, there's a lot of people that have not. So you're in the right place. And for those of you that have been using them, hopefully you'll learn a couple of new things and be impressed or be as, as excited as I am about our latest one. All right, so what are we gonna talk about? Um, we're gonna hit, uh, I call a Fab Five plus one. Um, uh, these are function keys that allow you to get data about your program. F2 is course data, F3 instructor, F5 names, F7 pay. Um, Alt F9 is a way to drill into a certain uh, student's payment history. And then the F9, which is dashboard, and the new one, F4. So I don't think many have seen that, so that will be new things. Well, this is then and that is now. When the F2 report was built initially, it only had a few pieces. Now there are lots of options on it. Um, some of the new fields that the F2 provides is the ability to search by category, uh, by course type, by grouping code, by subject code, by catalog code. Um, one of the new features is what's called a uh, set filter. I keep moving the mouse, here we go. Is called set filter. And that allows you to um, define what courses show when you go into course lookup. And um, there is actually a PowerPoint in the webinar archive uh, on the new F2 set filter feature. Uh, you have the ability to be able to set additional data fields on the record, and now the uh, show extra data fields allows you to support FM firm. And so that is something that allows um, you, if you are using the sponsoring firm on a course, uh, you can actually use the F2 list to generate that. And I'm going to give you a bit of homework here. I'm going to ask at the end of the webinar to you to, for you to give me some data search examples that you would typically like to know about courses, names, payments, uh, registrations in your database. And w uh, given time, we'll try to see if we can use an F key to get that data without having to run a report. Um, all right, so when you use, when you bring up a list of courses with the F2 uh, and you wanna drill down to a course, you can just double click on the course number and it will bring up the class that is tied to that course number. So again, in my opinion, this is a great way if you need to do editing on a group of classes and whereas typically you wouldn't be able to uh, say if you wanted a certain grouping code of classes or a certain course type, uh, you can't really use the find window, you know, the normal lookup 
you have to look up each course separately. But if you use the F2, set your parameter, you can bring up a list of courses and be able to quickly go through and edit all of them. So we're gonna go through, not do a lot of live examples yet. <clears throat> and then again, at the end, we'll, you, we'll invite you to stump the chump and uh, give us some examples of data that you might wanna look for. The F3 key, um, again, instructor talent search. Um, again, if you've got a small program, you may know every instructor and exactly how many kids they have, et cetera. But if you're a larger program and you are trying to find instructors or you're covering for a staff member who's out on leave and trying to look up a, an instructor with a certain skill, this tool is a great way to do it <clears throat> where you can, again, put in keywords on the instructor and be able to pull up a list of instructors in your database. Now, uh, the big deal on this is, of course, you have to put data in the database so that uh, you have to be able to, um, uh, you have to be able to have the data in if you want to be able to actually search that data. All right. That's the instructor search. And again, when you bring up the list of instructors, double clicking on the instructor name will open the faculty record. Name finder, then and now. So again, uh, lots more options available for you in looking up people. <clears throat> uh, originally, the name finder was developed to be able to give you the ability back in the seven two days to look up first name. Of course, now with 8.0, you can search by first name, but it does let you do things like search for title, search for an address field or a string in the address, search by city, uh, and again, member number, uh, looking in the comments, looking at the code field too. Um, so again, lots of options available now. Again, member number code field two are relatively new. Uh, you can now search for the credentials in a name. Certainly the ability to view extra fields is there and the ability to use custom condition to find records. Uh, one of the other new things in F5, and this is a Brittany special, one of your Aceware Aces, is to allow you to mass group family. So if you haven't done grouping a family for like the proxy registration, which will be a little shout out, next month's webinar is all about the new proxy reg capability that we're putting out in the new ACEWeb. And so that is one of the items. The other thing new on the F5 key is that you can now use uh, you can use an either or, or you can have the match between multiple criteria, be either an or designation or an and designation. So again, you can flip the, uh, again, expand versus contract <clears throat> the type of search. And I'm going to break my rule and go ahead and open one. And I notice I haven't I have, I'm gonna have to open student manager, so stay with me here. We'll get logged on here. So the F5 key, an example here, that was F6, F5 key. Um, and the other big thing about the function keys, for those of you that are new to the game, is that you can be in the middle of having multiple screens open. You can hit the F5 key or any of the function keys and bring it up. The other thing I would be remiss in saying is that the F1 key, the F1 key is the shortcut to the shortcuts key. That's one I really should have added, but the F1 key from student manager brings you a list of not only these fab five function keys, but a whole bunch of other shortcut keys uh, quick function keys that you can use in the system. And again, as Sharon noted, there is a handout in the, <clears throat> there is a handout in the downloads on the webinar that gives you a keyboard shortcut printable form that you can actually put on your, uh, put on your keyboard. All right, so we're gonna do F5 right in the middle of looking up a registration. 
And we want to find that Charles Havlicek. So if we do Charles, and well, we don't know his last name, but we know his first name is Charles and that he is affiliated with Aceware. So I'll put in Aceware and I'm using an OR connection. Well, in that case, we're going to get anybody from Aceware or anybody whose first name begins with Charles. Well, if there were dozens and dozens of names here, that's more than I want. So we're going to use Charles. And we're going to say they have to be from Aceware. And we're going to click the little button that flips it so it'll be an and condition, Charles and Aceware. And we're going to want to ask, we're going to, we're going to just let that be as it is. And that's the one person that we want. Again, double click on the name and you get to the full name record. <clears throat> now, Let's say one of the other things you can do with the function keys, and we'll use an example here, is that you say, I want to search for names, but I just want the names that I have added in the last seven days or edited in the last seven days. So there is no date range up here, but if I go to custom condition, I see that I've got a condition already created called name update greater than today's date minus five. And this is a great little trick that allows you to use uh, to make searches based on a time range from today. The date, D-A-T-E parens parens, is the student manager master variable for today's date. And so by adding a plus or a minus, you can either go X number of days in the future or X number of days in the past. So if I wanted all names updated in the last five days, I hit the button and there are my names. And you can see the data that is included with this. I see add date. I say, well, darn, I don't see the update date. I really kind of want to see that. So let's try that again. We're going to use our custom condition, but we're going to say view extra fields, and I'm going to put in NM update. So now I get all of the data that I've added in, and I didn't, the data field didn't get on there. Let's try that one more time. F5 few extra fields, NM update, and let's try, unless we have, get Matthew on this, few extra fields, NM update, there it is, I don't know what I did. So again, the data field that you ask for is added to the view. So again, you can make it, make that F5 do pretty much any element on the name record that you would want uh, to go to. All right, uh, we've talked about this. Um, and again, I use this a lot. If I wanna edit a group of names from a given company or a given location, bring up those names and you can look at, you can edit all of those names without having to go back to the find window on that. Uh, the mass grouping, this is an example of how you can group names together. All of the Havlicek's or all of the folks from Aceware, you can choose to group them all together and identify who the primary person is uh, for that group as the point of contact. Pay grabber, again, for you finance people out there, um, the, uh, this is a way for you to look up payments. Um, and again, it's the needle in a haystack. You get somebody calling about some esoteric payment and you, well, how do I go about looking for it? Well, the pay grabber allows you to search payments and actually drill back to all of the records about that payment, the registration, the payment. If you double click on the student name, it brings up that person's name record, but you can drill down from that name record to the registration and then on down into the payment. So you actually can drill down to the payment uh, within that element. And again, let's tab over and get a live example of that. 
So I'm on a name record and uh, uh, I get a call from some guy named Brown and he says, well, I want to know what I've paid for at Aceware in, uh, in the past and we'll just say it, but that I bought from Aceware. I pay for a lot of my kids' stuff. What did I, what did I buy? So we're going to type in the payer name. Brown is what we know. We're going to show it to the screen. We're not going to worry about uh, AW pending payments or voids, billings. And there are all of the registrations with the student. Well, it turns out Jeff Brown was the student, but it shows you data about the payment, uh, the payer address, the email. And again, double clicking on the name record allows you to drill down then into the registrations and into the payments for that particular person that you bring up. Now, one of the things that you'll note is that some of the function keys, when you get done with the lookup, it goes away. It clears the screen and you're back with whatever you were doing before. Others like pay grabber, instructor search, F9, they stay up until you hit cancel. And our reasoning is that some of these, if you're looking at payments, you might be wanting to look up several payments. So we leave it up until you're ready to quit and then you just hit cancel. And again, you can be doing whatever you want in the background, bring up those function keys and be able to um, uh, get the data that you're looking for. Um, Alt F9, whoa, let's go back to that. Alt F9 payment history. If you want to see an individual's payment record, payment history, and that is, again, they might have a bunch of courses. Come on, mouse. Um, when you're on the name record or the registration record, Pressing Alt F9 will bring up a list of all of the payments on file for that person. Payments, refunds, escrow values, uh, they're all there for display. So let's get a quick example of that because that's again, let's go find Havlicek because he's got, he's got a bunch more examples. 11, okay, so I'm looking for a payment for Chuck. He's got 11 classes, so do I have to go through all 11 registrations to see where the payment is? No. All you have to do is hold the Alt key, press F9, and it'll show you all of the payments for all of the classes, kind of the base detail about that particular payment. Um, and again, it even offers you a quick uh, print. If you want to do like a screen dump of it, you can do that without having to um, without having to do a screenshot. All right, now we're getting close. We're getting closer and closer. The next one is F9 dashboard. Um, again, um, the dashboard, I don't know how many of you out there are deans or directors, and we don't want to insult folks, but we always say this is the, the dean and director dummy proof way to look at status of classes. Uh, and what it allows you to do, and seriously, if you've got a director who is either scared of the computer or uh, is nervous about using the software, if you can get them a log on into student manager and show them the function keys, you'd actually perhaps allow them to be a little bit self-sufficient and not have to um, not have to depend on you all the time to generate the data. Although again, maybe that's job security, so you'd wanna pre uh, preserve that. So again, uh, the F9 key does a couple of different elements. And let's go in and, uh, okay, view the status of upcoming courses. Uh, that is ones that are less than, the less than the minimum enrollment or courses that are close to the maximum. Uh, you're able to set the time frame by default it is a 30-day time period. Um, the bottom part is a financial calculations. The top part is kind of upcoming classes, again, either close to max or close to being having to be canceled. The bottom part, it's, it's, a, it's a bifurcated, it's a multi, um, it's a hybrid kind of a, a dashboard, gives you financial data, how many enrollments you've got, how much income you've got, how many are from the web, 
and if you want to include year ago numbers it'll actually give you the equivalent of what you had during this same time period a year ago uh, you also can scope by given uh, main course data elements uh, or you can create a user-defined set of dates um, so let's go back to live data and again we're going to do f9 so again we've got two elements at the top the top part are classes coming up that are under the minimum enrollment uh, the percentage of the minimum that it belongs and then if i said i want to have classes close to full refresh display and i don't have any that are close to full then the bottom part is the ability to show your enrollment numbers for um, this quarter. And again, this is a, a QuickBooks type view. You can pick the time frame that you want to look at. Um, we've got old data in here. And then you can, again, either scope by a given cat department um, or display all which is no criteria just give me the date range so there's my total date range or the total data for the quarter if i said well i'm coordinator havlicek i only want to see my classes then now i'm just looking at havlicek coordinators classes for that particular time frame now um, there was a question in the session about well, I have a Mac, I have trouble getting to the function keys. Well, we can't get you a one key jump, but if you'll note under the menus now, under courses menu, there is now a F2 menu item. So you can actually, even with a Mac, you have to navigate a bit, uh, or if you have a laptop with funky function keys, funky function keys, you can go into the menus and again there's f4 find registrations mass group uh, names there is f5 for the names tool so again we can give you a little bit of leaven uh, we can have a present for you maybe you have to unwrap another layer of paper but you can get to those even if you are using a mac all right now the best to last uh, what is the last best thing it's f4 this was released in the june conference release and it's really a combination of f2 f5 and deadbeat so again it's about everything i would ever wish for so why is it good for you number one you can use a number of criteria to find particular names and you can combine that with criteria on courses and criteria on registrations and if you want to include canceled registrations waitlisted or billing you have the option to include those and then again like the other f keys you can add additional fields and again match a custom condition and again just like deadbeat if you want to show the due and paid amount on those registrations you're able to do that uh, with the show due and paid. So again, in the live mode, I'm in the middle of a name. Uh, somebody wants to know how many registrations we had this last week. Well, I could run a deadbeat report or I could press F4, put in my ad date range, and I'm gonna do a longer ad date range because I don't have contemporary data, 1231. And it'll generate a list of all oh wait, i take that back there is a way we should be able to do this i forget cheryl has updated my data so we should be good never mind that we're looking into the future here all right so we've got a bunch of registrations that we've added again the data that is displayed on this is some minimal data about the student some base data about the course um, the address of the student the uh, date the registration was added a grade if it exists the fee the fee amount and there you go so you've got the registrations now let's try that again uh, let's do a smaller one let's go with 0714 
And again, I, I was trying to clarify, it will give you a count at the top of how many registrations met that time frame criteria. Um, and again, so if we wanted to say we've got a date range, and again, this is one, F4 is a key that will stay on the screen until you hit cancel. So again, let's say that I wanted to say I only want to include courses where the subject code is ACEWARE for this 14-day period. And the answer is three of them instead of seven. So again, multiple, and you say, well, I want to know how much they paid for those classes. Well, we're going to check due and paid. And now if we scroll over to the right, we see the due and the paid. <clears throat> and again, if we wanted to have, I wanted to have a organizational code. I want to show the organizational code of that student. Um, I want to know what organization their company belongs to. Uh, we can go in and say, I want to show NMORG. We're going to show the organization code. Now, you'll also note, as I'm building this, this is different than some of the other uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, during a given session, right now we are working on F4. I haven't turned it off yet, or haven't closed it. It remembers the criteria that I have put in before. So that if you're saying, well, like I said, I'm fine tuning what I want to search for. Okay, I wanted this date. Oh, but I only want ACEWARE courses. And oh, by the way, I want to know the organization that person belongs to. You keep adding it. There's the organization. And again, uh, we can double click on the student ID to go to the registration. And or, oh, why isn't that going to registration? Double click on the name, double click on the, I guess either double clicking on the student ID or double clicking on the course number will take you to the registration. And then from there, you can go back to the name or you can go to the course data just like you can with a normal with a normal lookup. Um, where was I going with this? Okay, so right now, uh, again, if I said, well, I'd like to export that to Excel, I can do an export. If it was a long list and I wanted to have it sorted in different order, I could go ahead and do that. We said, well, I want to now do a different search based on fee detail. So I can just do clear values, and now we've cleared any of the values we've set up here. And now I want to say, well, I want course number 20S, and I want the fee description to be but in seat. And let's see if we have anybody. There are none that match 20S. Let's try 20 with but in seat, and there is one. So that, again, that is... Um, I guess to me, I think this really is a pretty, um, now again, in this case, when I cancel out of this and bring it back again, it does also clear uh, these conditions. So I think the only, well, in fact, it doesn't even remember the extra data fields. Uh, some some of the F keys remember the data fields. This one, um, it it closes it out. Um, all right, so I believe here, we're motoring on through this, Sharon, um, that we're talking about the F5 to uh, the name record. I need to double check on that because I thought that opened the name directly and the course code is what you click to get to the registration, but we'll double check that with Matthew. Like I said, you can get to the name record actually from within the registration, so you get to the same place. So Sharon, we've motored through this. I would love to play Stump the Chump. So uh, shoot, shoot a question or two at uh, us about uh, how you might get data out of the system. And let's see if we can do it with a function key or any other function keys uh, would work. So Sharon, I'm on way for my group there, guys. Let's we, go. I even uh, offered Norm, a prize. Norm, throw they... one out here. Uh, Sarah, we got, we got some guys out there. Fire, let, let's get some 
D is in there. D, give us, give us, give us a wish list about what you'd like to have on that. Of course, you would ask about membership. I don't know that we've got membership on, on the system. Um, questions about to do to do. Getting some applause, but no any, one likes to, no one likes to any applause. questions on that? Well, I'm gonna. We've got. We're early here. Um, let me. Uh, well, actually, while we're while we're waiting here, let me go ahead and bring up the next slide because this is one again. This will be on the PowerPoint uh, that will be downloadable. But again, lots of other resources available to you on function keys. Um, the, the functional function keys. There are there is an older webinar that actually this one is going to replace. Like I said, talk about the F2 set filter option. And again, on the help guide, uh, there is quite a bit of data on the help guide about how you um, how you got it. We've got one right now. So here we have. Uh, Vicky is asking. I need to find all the students with current registrations of a particular firm. Well, that's a good one. Your company might be wanting to know again. What have you done for me lately? I want to, uh, you know, ha has Aceware Systems had any employees get my right function key? Has Aceware Systems had any employees register in the past year? So we're going to put in Aceware. <clears throat> Again, I believe the search is case non-sensitive. We'll, we'll test that. And we're going to say the registration date is this 0101 through the present time. And I'm going to put in the how many can anybody tell me what the shortcut key is to put in today's date uh there is a coffee cup in this for you uh by golly and Brittany gets it in a flash shift f2 stamps in today's date congrats miss Brittany. all right let's see vicky and here are the registrations from aceware uh, that were between um, between these dates for the company Aceware. So again, it is case is it's non case sensitive for these searches, even though they're not uppercase. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay, good one, uh, good question, Vicky. Anybody else have a oh a wish list? We could edit the registration from F4. Vicki, uh, we should be able to do that. Okay, the question from Sarah is, wouldn't it be great if we could edit the registration from F4? So what you're saying is, if you want to take this out of its group and add an additional charge for a calculator, um, you can do it. So the answer is absolutely. Um, Absolutely, you can do that. So, um, so I believe, and again, um, we mentioned a minute ago that from the different modules, um, the F, uh, you can go to the main module of your area. So, like under registrations, you do have access to both Pay Grabber and to find registrations. So. Um, all right, guys, any other stump the chump items? Oh, I did want to get into another one, and that is, again, an example using the F2 for the uh, course enrollment report, is that, again, with your custom conditions, um, one of the things, if you're managing a program and you have multiple people working, is to say, well, what's been going on uh, in the system. Well, if you want to look at reports based on a time frame, but um, you say, I want to know all of the courses that have been added in the last seven days. So again, by using this custom condition, co-add date is the date the date was added. And I want to say it's greater than today's date minus seven, which means any course added in the last seven days. So let's see if we have any, and there were two. 
so that we're able to see that. And he said, oh, okay, again, um, I want to know the actual date it was added. So I'm going to do F2. We're going to put in our custom condition. We have a question, but we'll get to it in a second. Co-add date. And again, you'll note at the top here, um, I set this to be uh, view all no date range because this also determines uh, whatever you have up here in the first three, view X number of days out the next 30 days, view courses within a date range, or the view all, which again will only look at criteria that you've entered in either these match boxes or putting in this add date. But now I can see those courses and I see the add date of those particular courses. Um, let's see, is there a way to pull to register online? We've got a couple questions um, to answer and the D, I'm gonna answer that offline. The answer is no, <laughs> uh, but that's one. Is there a way to pull names along with UDF info instead of running a report? I, uh, that's a good question on the F keys. I know in, um, in, uh, in, the, in the quick list, you're able to actually add, uh, I believe you can add UDF data. Uh, the F5 key, I think you can add UDF data. For F4, let's see if we can do that. So we're going to add again, uh, we're going to look at ASWARE people. ASWARE, I know I got ASWARE people, and I'm going to ask for NUDFC1. And we'll see, and it does not like that. So I don't think, uh, Naida, that we can do that right now. So. Um, Control F, that is it. Um, so let's see any of the functions successfully identify online payments. Um, all right, uh, Sharon, do you see any other questions that I'm missing? I've been trying to double double duty double here duty. on. Hey, can you search for a firm business so it shows their list of people? their list of employees within F key. Well, uh, they should be able to do that with, now if you're just talking about a, a list of names, uh, the F5 key, if you said, I just want everybody from, again, Aceware, um, and let's say I just need a name list and I wanna export that to Excel, here are all of my Aceware people. So again, you just base it on a key search of the firm. And then when you get done with the view, you have the option to export that to Excel, which I'm gonna skip. So yes, you should be able, you should be able to do that. Um, and again, in terms of actually, we did have a question and I'll, I'll, I, I kind of I put kind of a put D off, D off, but will <laughs> the new F key functions identify people who went online and failed to make a payment. Well, if they were aid flagged as AW pending, the pay grabber does have the ability to look up AW pending payments. Now, again, there are permutations of this that it might not pick up, but the typical, if you get records flagged as AW pending, um, and ASWIB catches those, this will report those. So, so I don't have any in my demo. Sharon, you Chuck, I'm expanding one. a little bit further on the question that was asked about the folks from a firm. Okay. Um, so you had to list the firm, but it's one, they're wanting to see who all the firm has listed in specific courses. Aaron, clarify me if I'm still not understanding you. He wants okay. to see a list so it shows who all they have listed in a course. In, in a course. Well, uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. One, if you go to the firm record, you find a firm, and we're going to go to Aceware, you can go to go to uh, purchases. Nope, that's not, that's 
pocket ledger. You can go to, there it is, registrations, all registrations, val registrations with the balance, aging, billings, and it will then give you a view of every name with every class that they've taken. Now that is global, no criteria on that. If you wanted to do a date range and you wanted to look at that, then you could use the F4 key. Again, you'd put the firm that you want, you'd put in the criteria for which courses or what the date range would be, uh, you'd sort it by course code, and well, let's do that. We'll sort this by course code. We're gonna use ACEWARE, ACE, and we're gonna put in a 101 through, through Shift F2, and so we have for, um, Introduction to photography, here are the three. Eighth club, here are the two. Extend student manager, here are the four. Um, again, it doesn't format it, but it would give you a sheet and you could put it to Excel if you wanted to, to generate that. Um, there's a couple others. Brenda's asking here. Um, Sharon, I've got, we got, we're getting some good questions in and let me, let me try to, is the price field on the fees tab user defined? Um, tracks back to the, the node. Port? Don't hide. That's um, that one. I'm going to go offline right. uh, with you, Brenda. That's not within the F keys on that. So, Whew. Sharon, um, good discussion. Yeah, good questions. Right. Um, if anybody has one that they missed. Um, Type it in again real quick. Otherwise, uh, again, this is in version 89. That release is out. It's ready for you to download. Um, I think there are lots of great features on that, and I would encourage you to uh, uh, go to the webinar. I, I do want to do a shout out, though, uh, talking about webinars, and that is that I'm going to get to the if you go to the most recent webinar on the software update, software updates July edition, if you missed uh, the conference session or the uh, actual live July 8th session, do go back and view this because this really illustrates 30 or 40 new features in Student Manager and AceWeb that are now available to you. So again, um, F4 is the big new thing uh, for today's webinar, but there are lots more goodies out there. Um, we encourage you to come on and uh, log in and check them out. So, um, folks, thank you, Sharon. Thanks again, and uh, thanks to Cheryl for putting together the PowerPoint. Um, you all have a great day, and again, we hope that you found some presents under your fourth of july christmas tree or holiday tree so <laughs> take care everyone bye-bye take care bye-bye